Hello students. Today we will learn how to do section cutting in Botany practicals. Now, what is going to be section cutting? You must have already learnt in anatomy the innermost parts of the plant body. So, to study the tissues or the cells which are present inside the plant body, we need to take a section of the uh, particular material which we want to study. And when you are studying the stem or the root, whichever material you are going to study, you want to take a section of that and see the underlying uh, cells and tissues and also understand how they are arranged and why they are different from one to another. So today in this practical class we are going to learn the uh, section cutting procedure. Now in any section cutting procedure, first thing is you have to take out a thin section of the material whichever is given to you in the examination. The material may be a diagnostic, a monocostic, their contour or a monocostic. So whichever is the material we have, have to take first a very thin section of that. Then the second step of the section cutting is after taking the thin section of the given material, you have to stain the material with a stain called as saffron. So this saffron stain will uh, give the stain for a unified uh, cells in the plant body. So saffron will help us to recognize the cells and tissues clearly because the cells get stained by that part. Next is after the second step, you have to mount the stain material with the help of a drop of crystal on a slide so that you get a slide which is a temporary mounted slide for observation for the given material. So these are the three steps in which section cutting of the given material is done in body practice. Now let us see what are the equipment required for the section cutting. So the material required for section cutting are blade. We require a blade for section cutting and then we require a brush, we require a needle, we require glycerin, we require saffron for stain, we require Cover slips. This is cover slip for making a temporary slide after taking the stain. And we require watch glasses. This is watch glass. And this is the given material, which is a monopod plant grass. Now we will do the section cutting. How to go about this section cutting? Here in this beaker, we have the stem of the grass. Now we will take a blade and do the sections. Before that, we will put in a watch glass a little bit of water so that the thin sections which we cut, we will drop them in this water present in the watch glass. Now hold the material in between these two fingers of your hand with the help of a blade try to take out thin sections very very thin sections you have to take out and put them in the watch glass which is filled with water why do we put the sections in water because they don't get dried up and they will not show any air bubbles if you put in water so you take thin sections of the given material and make sure that you don't cut your fingers. Be very careful while doing the section cutting. Take out as many sections as possible because we don't know which is thin. Uh, for our naked eye, we will find all the sections to be very thin but when we observe them under the microscope, if they are not even and not thin, we cannot uh, see the underlying cells and the tissues. So take out as many sections as possible. Uh, and place them in the watch glass. So you find all the thin sections which I have taken from the blade in the watch glass will be water. Now what is the next step? The second step is put in this another watch glass a little bit of the stain that is saffron. After putting the stain Transfer these thin sections which you have taken from this watch glass 
into the watch glass which is containing the saffron. Okay. We are going to now stain the material which we have taken the thin sections of. Put these sections in the stain for about 1 to 2 minutes so that all the cells and tissues will get properly stained. Leave it like that for 1 or 2 minutes. After that, this is a slide. Upon this, you transfer the stained section with the help of a brush. With the help of a brush, you transfer the sections on the slide. And observe the slide in the microscope. If you observe the slide in the microscope, you will know the cells present in it. What type of section has been given? Since we have taken grass plant here, it is a mono cord section. So, if you are satisfied with the section, the stain and the thickness, then you have to take this slide from the microscope and then make a temporary mount of it. Now let's see how to make a temporary mount of this slide. For that, upon the section which you have taken, place a cover slip with the help of a needle. You have to make sure that you don't drop the cover slip upon the slide abruptly. With the help of the needle, hold the needle like this on the cover slip and before putting the cover slip upon the section, you have to mount it and make it into a temporary set, uh, mount. So, you have to put a drop of glycerin. For making a temp uh, temporary slide, we use glycerin, whereas for making the permanent slide, we use uh, Canada blast balsam. So, you put a drop of glycerin upon the section. That's it. Right? And then, hold the needle in this position and place the cover slip upon the slide very slowly, very slowly, so that there is no air bubble formed upon it. Once the cover slip is placed upon the slide, you can observe the slide back in the microscope and give this prepared slide for evaluation to the examiner. So this is how you prepare the section cutting of the given material in your botany practicals. Hello students, in today's Botany Practicals, we learn about the separation of plant elements through paper chromatography method. Now, how do you separate the plant elements and see what are the pigments present in the plant leaves? That is, different pigments we have studied already in my theory classes chlorophyll A, B, xanthophylls, carotene. All these pigments can be clearly seen by a procedure called as paper chromatography. Now, what is paper chromatography? What is the principle behind this paper chromatography? It is nothing but it is a technique in which individual components in a mixture, that is, when you take a plant, leaf, and grind it and take a mixture of that, so the individual components in a mixture, those can be separated by a technique depending upon the differential movement of each component through a stationary medium. Under the influence of a moving vehicle. In this paper chromatography technique, the stationary phase will be the chromatography paper and the moving phase will be the liquid in which the stationary paper will be placed. And the moving liquid will help the pigments depending upon their molecular absorption and the capillary activity. They will be showing in different phases, different pigments will be clearly absorbed. absorbed and in the vacuum field. So through this paper chromatography technique, we can clearly absorb different types of pigments present in a plant water. 
Now, let us see what are the requirements to do this experiment for paper chromatic acid. To do the separation of plant pigments through paper chromatography, we need the leaves of the plants, which are seen in this beaker, the leaves of uh, spinach or the leaves of hibiscus, or uh, you can take the leaves of tecoma also, any leaves you need. And then you need one beaker. You need a mortar and pestle to grind the leaves. You need a measuring cylinder. You need a scale and a pencil. You need scissors. You need the Vatman number one chromatography paper. You need capillary tubes. This is capillary tube. And you need some chemicals like acetone and petroleum ether for grinding the leaves. You need acetone for grinding the leaves. Now, how do you go about this? First of all, take the leaves from the beaker. Cut these leaves into small pieces with the help of a scissor. Place them in the water and pencil. Here, you can use a pinch of salt, a sand and a few drops of acetone. We are using directly acetone here to grind the leaves. So, grind the leaves in a thin mixture with the help of the pestle. Once the mixture is ready, you have to strain this mixture into the beaker with the help of a muslin cloth so that you get a, a green mixture which is devoid of all the leafy extract. Your mixture directly with the help of capillary tube you are putting it here. Okay. So after grinding, we get this mixture containing the plant pigments. Now, next step is take the Vatman paper and with the help of a scale, measure 2 centimeters upon this. With the help of a scale, measure 2 centimeters upon this and mark a point. After marking a point, draw a line. And put a dot in the center of the line. Okay. After you put a dot in the center of the line, with the help of a capillary tube, drop this grinded mixture upon the So with the help of capillary tube, put a drop of this plant pigment mixture upon the dot which you have marked with the help of pencil. Put two to, two to three times. Let it dry for some time. You can put few more times also. You can use either a measuring cylinder with a split cork for placing this Batman paper. Since it is very small, instead of measuring cylinder, I am using the beaker. In this beaker, I will now add a mixture which contains 10 ml of the mixture. The solvent mixture comprises of 9 ml of petroleum ether 
in one ml of acetone. I will take a 10 ml of this. Now this is a mixture which contains 9 ml of petroleum ether and 1 ml of acetone. In this mixture, I will draw this vacuum paper on which I have loaded my pigments with the help of capillary tube. In such a manner, only the tip of the vacuum paper gets dipped in that. The dot where I loaded the pigments does not get dipped. And I slowly place it and leave it like that. Now, as the liquid moves through that vacuum paper, the pigments which I have loaded, based upon their molecular weights and absorption capacity, they keep on moving and they will get separated, showing us different pigments at different levels. And this will take a little time for four different color pigments to be seen on this vacuum paper. So, basing upon their position and color, they can be identified as carotene, xanthophyll, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B in the descending order. So, this is the already done chromatography paper in which you can clearly see the pigments. Here, carotene, xanthophyll, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, the colors are different, you can observe. So, after a certain period of time, in this chromatography uh, paper also, you will find this type of different separation of the pigments. So, in descending order, you find carotene, xanthophyll, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B clearly seen on the chromatography paper. So, this is how you do the separation of plant pigments through paper chromatography. Is paving or separation? Yeah. This is the same thing. So, today, in the paper chromatography experiment, what we have learned, we can clearly see there are different types of pigments which are seen by their colors. The yellows are the xanthophils, the greens are the chlorophylls, and the blue are the phytophylls. So, the pigments have come from this center point where I have drawn with the help of a capillary tube. From there, it has been mobilized to the mobile liquid which we placed in the beaker. And from this stationary paper, all the pigments have moved in a differential manner based upon their absorption capacity and the molecular weights. And they have been clearly separated. So, this is how we will separate the plant pigments through paper chromatography experiment. So you see the carotenes, xanthophils, chlorophyll A and B in a descending order in this paper chromatography experiment. Okay, so this is the experiment which you have to do in your botany practicals. Uh, when the given material is given, the procedure which we have just discussed now, the same procedure you have to use and you have to uh, drop this uh, chromatography paper in a funnel having the liquid and allow it to separate and show these separated figures to the examiner. Is this clear? Thank you.